channel. Hey yo, hey yo, listen up, listen up, hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. The wireless woman. Shit, you in charge of the girls, right? I am in charge of the girls. Are you in charge of the girls? I am in charge of the girls. Okay. All right, hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, all you Wi-Fi's, welcome back. Or if you're new to the channel, welcome in to yet another transmission of the wireless woman go ahead and do me a favor you already know the drill on your way in and like this video why because when you like this video well i love it also make sure that you subscribe to the channel and that you click the notification bell for notifications of when I upload new content and when I go live. My live calendar, you guys, has been filling up and I do have a lot of very interesting guests that I want to bring on for you. Um, we're going to be closing out season two of The Wireless Woman. I've been waiting until I move into my new home my new abode to close out the season because I want to make sure that I can coincide my break with my move so that I'll be back with a brand new setup. I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't know how it's gonna go in the new house, in the new place, but I am a firm believer in new beginnings. If I didn't, I wouldn't be taking this journey and I wouldn't be taking you on it with me so I definitely feel like the new environment even though it won't be room 303 will bring new insights hopefully new audiences new perspectives which is what I really want to be able to bring to you but before I evolve into my new transformed figure I want to come in here and be petty today Yep, today I'm going to talk about being picked. And as the chairperson of picked women, I feel like if anyone has a perspective on this, if anyone can see both sides like Chanel. See both sides like Chanel. See on both sides like Chanel. It's me. So I want to start off by saying there have been a lot of gender traitors in our midst, and it's really weird gender traitors, much like race traitors, don't understand that when we don't close ranks around doing the right thing, we end up empowering our own demise. And I always say, that misogyny, it's just racisms. It's just racism, sexy cousin. And I hope I will say that enough to drive that into the hearts, like a wooden stake, drive it into the hearts of some vampire men and women and help you to understand that being divided against ourselves is yes white supremacy it is the goal of the enemy but if we feed into it we are no better than our enemies and i was watching kenyatta diello's channel and he was talking about black men and fascism our number one goal and mission as black men is to destroy all systems and institutions of oppression, all of them. A lot of black men are picking and choosing. I don't like capitalism, but I like being able to control my woman and being the head of my and dominating women. I know I want to free my people, but there's some people I don't like. These gays and 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 these punks and and these uh, uh these other these these non-believing black people, these atheist non-believers, then and, and every. Single one of these, or not every single, but a lot of these groups that claim they want freedom then have caveats of groups they want to continue to uh, exploit and oppress. But we have to destroy and oppose. Oh, ain't no such thing as halfway crooks. Ain't no such thing as halfway uh, revolutionaries. 
And I had not drawn the correlation. I just knew something about this whole new like submit to me or else I'm not going to protect you and provide for you type of energy. The next time you get in trouble, call a crackhead. I knew that wasn't right. I knew something didn't quite feel right about it, but I didn't recognize that right wing extremism was creeping into our culture. I didn't recognize that we were on the precipice of fascism, totalitarianism, Nazism in the black community. I just knew something didn't quite feel right. But you got to go back to all those people who voted Hitler into office, <laughs> people who love Hitler and are, for whatever reason, not afraid to say that nowadays. I love Jewish people, but I also love Nazis. People who voted Donald Trump into office just to turn around on January 6th and see a side of him that evidently they didn't see coming. We as black women have to come to the understanding that we have the power. I won't necessarily say to completely stomp out misogyny in our culture, but we definitely can resist it. I can't see the utility of acquiescing, bottling, and conditioning our men to be male supremacists. I don't see how we feel that this is going to strengthen strengthen us in the current place where we find ourselves in society. I can't personally think of any reason why a woman would side with, would align with our males in the current state of the Black community. Males who have no kingdom, who don't even have a community, many who don't even have a family. Most of these dating coaches, these manospheric men don't even have a following in their own home. But for some odd reason, you believe these people should be able to come to a platform and have a following of thousands of people when they don't even have a community affiliation. They're calling themselves alpha males, but they're actually just lone wolves. They don't belong to a pack. They don't belong to a pride. And, and lots of people who want to go their way just really want to be lone wolves. They want to be the masters of their own domain, but they couldn't convince anybody to come and join that pride if they paid them in a lot of instances. Most of these passport bros are going to other countries to pay women to become their submissive women. And the only reason they're going to these other countries is the same reason I'm moving to South Carolina. Inflation. American women cost too much to submit. That's it. They cost too much to subjugate. Because if we were cheaper to convince then I, I don't think we would see the same amount of problems. And the sad part about it is, this is a side note and a caveat, we are pretty cheap. I mean, we we really be going to the lowest bidder in this country. And if we got the bar any lower than what it is right now, you'd be able to double dutch with it. But I can't see a reason why a woman would side with men to her own detriment except for the purpose of being picked, except for the purpose of being chosen. You know, there's a lot of men who are very ego driven by the applause and the acceptance of others. But there's a lot of women that cannot stand in their womanhood without the validation of men. Simple as that. You don't even feel like a woman. Unless a man is the one that's giving you your validation and you're willing to do that to the detriment of your own best interest. These women are no better than Uncle Tom's. They're no better than other race traitors that have sold out their own people in the past. These are the Bill O'Neill's of women. And I'm tired of these women being propped up as being the ideal of what a woman should be.
because these are the women, these mammies. I'm I'm getting ready to do an episode that's called Don't Take Your Mom's Relationship Advice. Because a lot of these women created the men that we are having the problems with now. They reared them. They nurtured them. They spoke life into them. And this is the result of that dedication. We as women cannot believe that to continue down this path is creating and strengthening our men and our community because trust me when I say (laughs) your mom was a better servant than you, better cook, was way more submissive. I mean, that's what they said back in the day that they were. So how did we get here? Until we raise the standard, even the Bible says that when the enemy comes in like a fluid, God raises up a standard against them. He doesn't lower the standard for the fluid. He raises it. So you got to start to ask yourself that question. We are seeing the, the social media platforms be flooded with black woman hate. When are we going to raise our standards? Because lowering our standards is doing nothing but fueling the fluid. We are asking a group of men that don't even love themselves. That have not shown love for their community. For their families of origin. For their own flesh and blood, their own children. To come in and to love us out of our desperation and there's no amount of love there's no amount of sugar that you can pour on someone who doesn't love themselves that somehow if you just drown them in your love it will wipe out and wash out their self-loathing somehow the circle of life That you will love this person, love this person, love this person, love this person to life and to health to the point that they love you. And all bitches are the same, just like my hoes, you know. I keep them broke. That's not how it goes. That's not really what happens. It's like government spending where they tell you they've got to spend money and spend, spend, spend until they make more. And that's how you make more money is by spending it. Lots and lots of government spending will boost the economy. And then they make a whole bunch of fake money to cover all the money they spent. You can't get something real. The only thing that can come out of that type of unbalanced deficit is something counterfeit. Because as you love on, love on, love on this other person and drain yourself and that person lines up to receive from the tap of your love, First of all, that in and of itself isn't love. No one wants to put you in a situation to drain your accounts. But as you love and love and love and pour and love and love on that self-loathing, self-hating person who's collecting all that love to the point that you dry yourself out, well, as soon as you are no longer of the service that you were to that person who was only there, For the love, for the sugar that you were pouring out on them. Well, they're going to take all that, pack it up, and leave with the same (laughs) self-hate that they came with. If you're you're lucky, they won't project theirs back onto you and leave you hating yourself or the sacrifice that you made to them. Any person who knows how to love you is going to come into the situation loving themselves first choosing you out of an abundance of love and an abundance of peace that they already have a lot of y'all are not picked y'all have been plucked and your relationships show that you're not happy in your relationship you're afraid to leave your relationship But your relationship isn't bringing you abundance. It isn't bringing you happiness. It isn't bringing you balance. It's just bringing you validation. This is not for women who are in healthy, balanced, happy 
relationships. This is for women who are willing to degrade, demoralize themselves and other women for the purpose of being deemed worthy to be in a relationship. If you got to lower yourself or the next woman to be in that relationship, there's no way that relationship is going to elevate you. There's no ring that's going to elevate your status when you had to lower yourself to get it. And if anyone should know, it would be me. Because a lot of y'all haven't been picked, you've been plucked. And all you got to do is give it a couple of years and we're going to watch your petals wither. Because a woman in the hands of a man is going to grow into the fullness of her womanhood, not be diminished in it, not be cut off in it, not be reduced by her relationship. That's what happens when you cut flowers. There's a difference when you plant them. So I just wanted to come in here and put my public service announcement out. You self-hating women that are out here breathing life into self-hating men are the problem in our community. You women who are validating women for having a man and having a ring and having a relationship that they aren't even happy in. Listen, I know that generation of women. I was born in the 80s that would tell you, well, it's better to have a piece of man than no man at all. That's your husband. That's your husband. That's your husband. Make sure that he, these Abrahamic religions got y'all twisted up on the value of really a man and a woman in a relationship with this value system. And it's crazy to me how the same men who talk about the white man this, the white man that, the white man this, will use the white man's model for how he's supposed to treat this woman. Listen, if you're going to do that, well, then use the white man's money. And the saddest part about it is a lot of women don't understand the courage that it takes to stand up to a man especially one that you're in intimate relationship with, whether it be a father, whether it be a husband, to actually challenge him in his manhood to raise his standard for how he sees you. But a lot of women are out here doing it. And for all of you women that want to be dragged through the mud by a man and treated like trash, just pick you a man and let it happen in secret. You don't have to break the stride of women who are really out here trying to get better treatment for us all. Just because you trying to get one man, just go pick the one you like, speak life over him, pour oil all over him, anoint him king over your household and let him do his work on you. Because any woman who has to lower her standards and lower herself for a man, trust me, that man don't have no good intentions for you. He can't. He can't. How can he come into your life and not raise you to the second power? How is somehow him coming into your life a division problem instead of a multiplication one? Now, how is a man who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from God equal you getting treated like trash and drugged through the mud? How? How? How are you supposed to be a blessing to his life when you're being treated like a curse? How? So all I'm saying is just let women who are doing the work do the work. Because if black men would take the same type of fight, the same type of rising up, we ain't going to take it no more. We ain't going to submit no more. The white men that they're trying to bring to black women community wouldn't be in this position in the first place. We would have a group of men that we could respect. We'd have a community. We'd have some generational wealth to push forward, but no, they want to fight with us. And, and we as women cannot ease up the fight. We watched our black men fight for freedom, get to the precipice of it and then turn back and be peaceful. And, and realize the dream of little black boys and little white girls. And One day right now in Alabama, little black boys and black girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and white girls as sisters and brothers. I have a dream today. We did that. We watched them do that. And it got us here. 
So every black man that wants to be revolutionary, every black man that wants freedom for all black people, <laughs> who doesn't want the excuse for black men to be on their worst behavior and still be worshipped, still be treated like kings in our community, when the only thing that that has been doing is been creating psychopaths and sociopaths when it has turned us into a culture of narcissists that have now gone out into every other community of women to perpetuate so that it don't stop and it don't stop no no and it won't stop no, no. so that it wouldn't stop at us so that they could make baby mamas of the world For this. A worldwide coalition of mixed children. <laughs> and we just go sit back and speak life into that. We go sit back and be responsible for being a blessing to that. And then wonder where the hate is coming from. Gotcha. Gotcha. I done been picked. I done been chosen. I done been to the mountaintop several times. Just to turn around, come back down that thing with the tablets like Moses and find that down in the valley, people making idols. You are not better than other women because a man chose you, especially when you look around and see your community is still on fire, especially when you know that the majority of women are being treated poorly. The majority of children are being raised without fathers some of y'all are in relationships with me that married you six months after meeting you after making a fool out of another woman for eight years and you think somehow you elevated the character of that man because you was the biggest loser because you were a bigger fool than the other woman that he made a fool out of we need to stop we need to take a step back and make sure that until the least of us is being treated well, that the rest of us aren't sitting around resting. And I know like I'm a big heathen, but I'm starting to feel the pull in my spirit to bring a whole lot more of my actual biblical foundation into the things that I'm talking about. And there was a time when those bloody colonizing Israelites were going into the promised land and they had gotten far enough into the land that some of them had started to set up camps and set up home. And so they was like, nah, there's no reason for us to keep fighting. Like we've done enough. We've got our land. And they had to be reminded of the promise. They had to be re-enlisted back into the fight and made to understand that until all of the Israelites were settled in, in the land until they had taken all of the land that God had given to them and separated it up amongst all of the tribes that none of them was going to sit the ass in their little homes and huts and tents and act like they were done. Okay, ladies, now let's get information. So. If you see what I see and you feel as I feel. But if you see what I see, if you feel as I feel, and if you would seek as I seek. Go ahead and drop that fire headphones emoji in the comments. I'd love to hear from you and engage with you there. But until the next episode, all y'all self-hating, misogynistic, male-identified women, y'all can go ahead and clap out for me. See you next time. Section leaders, what is our concept? One band, one sound. One band, one sound. <laughs>